wanted to share the tools that you need to get started with sewing. This is a follow-up video to my first time sewing video that I'll link here. I'm gonna share just the tools that will yield a much better product in the end, something that's wearable, washable, something that you're proud of, and something that is beautiful. So I'll walk you through all of the sewing tools that I use on every sewing project. You are going to want a great sewing machine. This is probably an intermediate sewing machine. It's not the cheapest, it's not the most expensive. It's about the middle of the line. I've had it for over eight years, maybe nine years, and it works beautifully. I get it serviced at least once a year at my local sewing shop, and it's a baby lock, Grace. I believe it is discontinued but Baby Lock has a lot of other options, especially for beginners and even more skilled. So what I love about this machine is it has many different stitches. It's easy to use. You can trade out everything easily. The bobbin is top loading, so I can always see if it's about to run out. It has this little storage space the arm comes off it's easy to add the thread and wind the bobbin so it's a great machine it's very straightforward i love the baby lock brand um, and overall you're just going to want a great sewing machine so i have some suggestions linked below for beginner machines that you might be interested in. You can for sure start your sewing journey without a serger, but if you know you're gonna be making a lot of garments that you're gonna wear or give away or sell, um, you definitely want a serger. It makes everything so much easier. It's so fun to use. The one I have is the Brother. It is very straightforward. It is probably the cheapest on the market and it does the job so well so what a serger is is it finishes off the side seams so your seams won't unravel and the fabric won't unravel when you wash it and wear it so it's definitely a top recommendation but if you're not ready to invest in a serger i definitely recommend using pinking shears or you can use the zigzag stitch on your regular machine and a good thing is, is you can find sergers on Facebook Marketplace. You can go to your local sewing machine shop and see if they have any used that they're selling. And you can even ask around to see if someone has one stored away in their attic. I definitely recommend a serger if you're going to be making clothes often. This is a straight edge and I use this for all of my projects, it's 24 inches, so it gives you enough room to cut those long pieces that usually comes with a pattern or something like that. And the reason I like this one is it's clear. So when you line it up to the fabric, you can see under and you can make sure you're doing a straight line. My next recommendation is a seam ripper. So I use a seam ripper on every project and I just get so into what I'm doing that I kind of lose track of what I'm doing. So I'll sew something backwards, sew something wrong, and a seam ripper will save your project. The best advice I've been given is to fix it now instead of later, because when you just take the time, seam rip something, sew it again, and do it the right way, then the end product is just so much better. You'll wear it longer, it will, actually last, it will wash well, so make sure you have a seam ripper before you get started. You'll want to iron all of your projects and when you take the time to iron your seams as you're going along, it yields a much better product. So when you just use a home iron, they have specialty sewing irons, steam irons, just all of these things, but like I said, don't get overwhelmed with all the tools, just use what you have. So I used a home iron and it works great. Ironing your garment as you go is going to just be the ticket to a better result. You want some specialty scissors and the reason you want some sharp 
fabric scissors is because when you're getting into sewing, it's easy to just pick up maybe kitchen scissors or ones you use around the house. But when you have some specialty fabric scissors, there's nothing like cutting out your fabric or your pattern with a sharp pair of scissors that's going to cut into the fabric the correct way and make sure you're cutting a straight line and it's not dull. So make sure you protect your fabric scissors and kind of keep them safe. Along that same lines, you want some thread snips and this is just a small pair of scissors that will allow you to cut those extra threads at the end of your project so you don't have any loose threads. A cutting mat usually goes under the radar, but it is so important to have when you're cutting out a pattern, cutting out long lines, any fabric, a self-healing cutting mat is a necessity. <laughs> so for me, I keep my cutting mat on my Ikea desk that I have here and it just stays out all the time, but you can roll it up, just keep it in a closet if you're working at like a kitchen table or something like that, or even on the ground but a cutting mat is not too expensive. You can get them on Amazon or at your local fabric store. And I love how the ruler is laid out so I can just double check my measurements. And so invest in a good cutting mat. It will last you years, like probably forever. I have definitely used just like a pen or a Sharpie when drawing shapes or cutting out things on my fabric, but you should probably use some Taylor's chalk. This is professional chalk that will just help you make marks on your fabric and it's going to wash away when you wash your garment. You can just kind of smooth it out and it'll go away. But this is definitely needed because it actually washes out as opposed to a pen that I, I also like to use. <laughs> you want to make sure you're investing in some pins or you can also use clips or weights. So. It kind of depends on the project you're doing. I personally use pens for everything. These are just sharp pens that are going to keep your fabric where it needs to go before you're starting to sew or cut anything. Make sure with your pens you have like a magnetic holder for it or a pen poof, whatever it is to keep them safe so they don't fall on the ground. It's ridiculous how many times I drop pens and I know I should get one of those magnet things but I just keep dropping them. And that is all for all of the tools that I use for every project. If you need any more recommendations or help, just comment below, I'd love to help you out. If you're looking for some beginner projects, I have a lot on my YouTube channel here and I've linked some below for you. So I'll see you next week with a new tutorial video.